Hi everybody, welcome to our online worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad that you're with us as we gather around the Word of God to grow as disciples of the Lord Jesus. Today we're going to take a look at St. Michael's and all the angels. We're celebrating that day this week in the church year. And specifically we want to take a look at how St. Michael and all the angels are involved in a gospel image for us to teach us about our Lord Jesus Christ, and specifically about absolution, that formal announcement that your sins are forgiven. We're gonna be taking a look at Revelation chapter 12 today, where there is war in heaven. Saint Michael and all the angels are battling Satan and his depraved demons. And at the end of the battle, of course, Christ is the one standing in heaven proclaiming forgiveness to us. So today we're going to be taking a look at Revelation 12. If you have your Bible, we want to make sure that we understand absolution today as we celebrate St. Michael and all the angels. Glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. We begin our worship service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear now the words of absolution, the official announcement that you are set free from your sins. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are set free from your sins. Our first scripture lesson for today is from Revelation chapter 12. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared for her by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. 
For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness, to the place where she is to be nourished for a time, and times, and half a time. The serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured out from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman, and he went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. This is the word of our God. Our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 10. The first 12 verses, and then the 17th through 20th verse. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority, authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. We join together now in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the church year, this week is a celebration of St. Michael and all the angels. It's a time that the church takes to remember the spiritual beings that God has created that serve his people. You know, it seems that everyone has some kind of an interest in angels. They're intriguing. They are mysterious. Even unbelievers have an interest in angels. You can tell that by the number of TV shows or movies or books or other items that that concern angels. While Hollywood can make up some fanciful stories about angels... And some even claim to communicate with angels. And there are even some who pray to angels. As conservative Lutherans, we hold to what Scripture teaches us about them. Perhaps the um, best summary of angels is found in the book of Hebrews. In chapter 1, it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent out to serve for for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. Angels do God's bidding, and they serve God's people. That's about all we know about angels. We might have some stories about angels in Scripture, but the bottom line is that they do God's bidding, and they serve his people. Today we heard a fascinating story of how God used Michael, the archangel, and all the holy angels to expel Satan and his wicked demons from God's presence in heaven. If you have your Bibles, take a look at Revelation chapter 12. We want to look at verses 7 through 10 again. Revelation 12, 7 through 10. Now war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan the deceiver of the whole world. And he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. What a picturesque way of describing the work of Christ. This is really a story of the gospel. And of course, it's good news for us. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, Satan is defeated and his power has been destroyed. Jesus crushed Satan's head when he died on the cross. And that defeat is pictured in the book of Revelation as war in heaven. Michael, the archangel, is sent to lead an army of holy angels to expel Satan and his depraved demons from heaven. It's a fantastic image of the archangel battling the great red dragon. It's a dramatic image of the gospel itself. Satan, the accuser, is cast out of heaven and forever banished from the presence of God. That's good news for us. You know, Jesus used similar language in our gospel lesson from Luke today. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning out of heaven. This is wonderful good news for us, 100% 
gospel for us. What it means is that there is no one in heaven to accuse you of sin. Let me say that again. There is no one in heaven to accuse you of sin. Remember that the, the word devil means accuser. He accuses you of sin, and he demands that you are punished for your sin. But now, because of Jesus, all of that has changed. The devil, the accuser, has been cast out of heaven. Satan has been defeated, and the crucified and risen Savior of the world, the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, now stands in God's presence. And he would never accuse you of sin. Rather, he absolves you of sin. He sets you free from your sin, and he forgives you. Satan may accuse you, but the Son of God absolves you and sets you free. Just think of how wonderful this is and all the things that this means. It means that there is now no condemnation for you through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no one who condemns you. Your sins will never be brought up again against you. There is no one in heaven who, ever, who even remembers your sins. Every single sin you commit, even those that you regret the most, they are completely forgiven because of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are absolved of your sins. That means that you are set free. And in this word picture, Satan has been cast out. So there is no one to condemn you, no one to accuse you. The only thing that God the Father hears is Christ absolving you and setting you free. The Lord Jesus does not accuse you of your sin. The Lord Jesus Christ absolves you of your sin. Absolution is a Latin word that means to officially and formally announce that you are set free, that you are absolved of your sin and its punishment. It's like Jesus has, has opened up your prison door and he said, you're free. He set you free through his death and resurrection. That prison that we are in, is sin and guilt and death and the power of the devil. But the Lord Jesus Christ has opened that prison cell door and he proclaims and declares to you, you are free, you are absolved, you are forgiven. You've been given new life to live, free from Satan and ac accusations and condemnation. You are forgiven. You belong to the Lord. You have a new life to live. This new life of forgiveness, of being set free, began for you at holy baptism, where God put his name on you. You were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and your sins were washed away in the waters of holy baptism. Your new life began there, and you were also given the Holy Spirit. You are filled with the Holy Spirit as he leads you and guides you and comforts you and strengthens you every single moment of every single day. Your new life is filled with love and good works. It's a life of faith and trust in the Lord and his word. Your new life is one of holiness and godliness. Your new life is guided by God's Ten Commandments. 
as they teach us what is right and what is wrong and what is good and what is evil. The Ten Commandments teach us how to love the Lord our God and how to love our neighbor as ourselves. Your new life learns what is good and right and true and holy in God's eyes and puts those things into practice each day. Your new life is one of striving to always be biblically literate and doctrinally sound and mission-minded and passionately engaged in the kingdom of God. You're not in prison anymore. No one is accusing you of sin. There is no condemnation for you. You are absolved. You are set free. The prison door is open. You are forgiven. You have a new life to live through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 12, in this war in heaven with St. Michael and all the angels battling Satan, that great red dragon, and, and all of his evil demons, the bottom line of it is, is that Satan has been cast out of heaven, that there is no one in heaven to accuse you of your sin. Satan has been cast out, and it's now the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who stands alone at the right hand of God the Father. He stands in God's presence, absolving you of your sin, setting you free to live a new life. You know, Satan has been cast out of heaven, but he's still evil. And he still is planning wicked things. One of the things that we learn in Revelation chapter 12 is that Satan now realizes that he has been defeated. And he knows that his time is short. On the last day, the Lord Jesus will throw him and his wicked demons into the lake of fire, never to be heard from again. But until then... Satan is furious. And we learn in this chapter 12 of Revelation that you are a target now of Satan and his evil demons. Take a look at Revelation 12. Look at verse 17. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. That's you. You're the offspring. You're the ones who are keeping the commandments of God. You're the ones who are holding to the testimony of Jesus. You're a target of Satan and his vile demons. Revelation reinforces in this apocalyptic imagery of this war in heaven what Jesus and the apostles have already taught us in the New Testament. And that's this, that you can expect persecution and trials and temptations from Satan and his evil demons. Of course, we all know temptations are everywhere around us. The devil and his demons never tire of their work of tempting us or trying to separate us from Christ. They are always at work trying to lie to you or trying to deceive you. They are at work to lead you into sin they work hard trying to drive a wedge between you and Christ so that you turn away from him. Remember that the devil and his depraved demons has 6,000 years of practice under their belt. Satan knows how to tempt us. Satan can take any good and perfect gift from God the Father in heaven 
and he can turn it upside down and he can make it work against you. Satan can whisper to you false accusations in order to get you to doubt God's absolution of your sins. So he he can get you to think that you're still in a prison of guilt and that you will die rather than being set free because of the Lord Jesus. Satan can hound you with doubts about yourself and your own self-worth and your own inadequacies, so much so that you start to doubt if God can even forgive you, if God can even love you. Satan can cloud the truth and confuse you so much that, that you start to think that evil is good and good is evil. Satan can convince you to sin and then he will give you reasons to rationalize it so that you keep on sinning. Or Satan can convince you to sin And then he will turn on you on a dime and brutally condemn you and torture you with unceasing guilt. Don't be deceived. Satan is your enemy. And he knows what he is doing. He is pictured in Revelation chapter 12 as a desperately defeated red dragon who knows that his time is short. He's dangerous. And you are his target. You are the target of Satan and his nasty demons. But the most important thing about this is that the Lord Jesus Christ has defeated Satan and his demons and has given you the victory. In Christ, you are not a helpless victim to Satan. You have been absolved of your sins and your guilt by the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been set free from the power of the devil and his disgusting demons and all the many ways that they work in your life. You are forgiven. You belong to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you have a new life of faith to live every single day. Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead on the third day is the victory over the devil and his demons. And that victory has been given to you as a free gift. You have been given the victory over the devil and his dreadful demons. Christ's victory on the cross is pictured for us as war in heaven. Michael, the archangel, battling Satan, the great red dragon, and all the holy angels defeating all the wicked demons. But most importantly, this is a dramatic picture of the gospel. Satan, the accuser, is cast out of heaven, forever banished from the presence of God. There is no one in heaven to accuse you of sin. Rather, the Lord Jesus Christ is there. The crucified and risen Son of God, the Savior of the world, Jesus now stands in the presence of God, And he absolves you of all of your sins. You are forgiven. You are set free because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go out now and live your new life of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are absolved. Amen. We pray. Holy Trinity, we thank you for providing absolution for us. The formal announcement 
of forgiveness, that we have been set free from sin and guilt and death and the power of the devil. Help us to believe and to never doubt this gospel proclamation. We thank you for casting Satan out of heaven and hearing only the voice of Jesus, the one who absolves us of our sins. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. Go out and live a new life. Your sins are absolved. You are set free. Have a great week. See you next week in worship.